You cannot, and I repeat, cannot skip this step when you're looking for a new tenant for your rental property. Tenant screening is one of the most important parts of finding a tenant and part of the rental process, so stay tuned. If you're looking for great landlord advice and information, then subscribe to our channel, and if you hit the bell, you'll be notified every Wednesday when we post a new video. Do you have a consistent, reliable, and thorough way to do a background screening for your applicants for your rental properties? If you don't, then stay right here because after the end of this video, you're gonna have eight steps that you can follow every single time you have a rental application so that you can be sure that you're consistent and thorough so that you can get the best tenant for your property. My name is Sue Ritchie. I am the co-owner and principal broker of Ritchie Property Management. We're a residential property management company in Northern Virginia, and we manage over 300 properties. We do a lot of applications, and we've built a great process so that we get good tenants for our owners, and today I wanna share that process with you. So stay right here. Okay, so the very first thing you wanna do is start with a credit check. This is probably the most common thing that people do if they do a background check. So credit check is just like somebody's financial health. It's a great baseline. It tells you how the applicant has used debt in the past. It tells you the amount of debt they have. And it also tells you if they pay their bills on time. And again, like I said, it's a great baseline, but it's definitely not enough, but it's the first step. There are companies out there that can provide background, uh, sorry, credit checks for you. So find, you can find those pretty easily online if you just Google them. Make sure you, you use them and do, start first with a credit check. Step number two is income verification. On the application, an applicant will put what their current income is, but you can't just rely on that. You definitely want to verify that. So you can call their employer. You can definitely ask for W-2s, ask for some of their most recent pay stubs. But now be careful because people can doctor up various documents. We've heard about all kinds of stories about people providing fake documents. So make sure that those documents are legitimate and verify that that income is actually the right number. Also, if the applicant is self-employed, you're gonna wanna get uh, the most recent tax return in order to verify their income. So do your due diligence, verify the income, because obviously without the money, they can't qualify for the rent. Okay, step number three is look at their debt to income ratio. Now that you've pulled their credit and you verified their income, you'll be able to come up with this ratio. What this is, and the guidelines are generally this, 30 to 40% is, is a reasonable uh, percentage. And what that means is, if you take the rent plus the utilities, those expenses should be about 30% of the monthly rent. If you add in then all the other debts that they have, revolving debt, et cetera, and you add that to the rent and the utilities, that number should not be more than 40% of the monthly rental amount. These are guidelines used by mortgage lenders. They're pretty consistent within the industry. So you can choose whatever guidelines you're comfortable with, but that's, that's generally what we see. So look at that debt to income ratio. It will tell you whether the applicant really can qualify and can afford to pay the rent you're asking. Step number four is employment verification. This goes along, of course, with the income verification, but you wanna make sure that the applicant is still working. They might put their employer on the applicant, but maybe they got fired yesterday. So you wanna call, make sure that they still work where they work and that they actually do have the income. So that sort of goes along with the income, but, but ask that and verify that as well. Do you have any great tenant screening tips that you can share, things that have worked for you and helped you be successful? Share them in the comments below, we'd love to hear them. Step number five is just simply an ID verification. Along with the application, make sure that you get a copy of the applicant's driver's license so that you can, in fact, verify that they are who they are. Look at the picture, make sure that they are, um, that their information matches up with the application and just keep that on file, but you wanna verify that and have those in hand. Okay, step number six is past tenancy or landlord verification. This will tell you a lot about how they took care of the property and what kind of tenants they were. Again, on the application, there'll be a space for the most recent landlord and, and also you, one you can add for a landlord before that. 
If you can get two landlord verifications, great, but at least get the one from this past, um, their past residence. They'll ask the landlord if they paid the rent on time. Did they take care of the property? Were they responsive? Did they, did, were they able to get all their security deposit back? Those are the kinds of things you wanna know from a landlord and that will help you determine um, whether you want them as um, part of, as, as your tenants. Okay, step number seven is a pet verification. If you allow pets in your property, you wanna make sure that you get all the information on the pet, just like you would for an applicant. There are actually tenant or pet screening companies out there now that will do background checks on pets to make sure that they don't have a history of violence or biting someone or whatever. You wanna make sure that the, the applicant puts the, the type of breed it is, the color, the weight, et cetera, and all the details about the pet and we've heard for other stories from other people, I think this is a great idea to put, get, have the applicant take a picture with their pet. We've heard people put uh, information on the application about a different pet. For example, they might put a very small, non-discreet, or a very uh, mild-mannered type of dog, when in fact, maybe they have a great big German Shepherd or a pit bull. I love dogs, but those dogs, um, can do more wear and tear, and you want to just make sure that the right dog that's on the applicant application is the one that's actually living in the property. One other thing you want to note about pets in your property, make sure that you check with your homeowner's insurance and that the breed of dog that the applicant has is covered by your homeowner's insurance. There is a, a list of restricted breeds that many insurance companies have because they have been known to be a bit more dangerous. So you wanna take those into, uh, you wanna do your homework and check with your company and make sure that they are allowed. Otherwise, you could be setting yourself up and opening yourself up to a lot of potential liability if that dog or animal were to bite somebody or hurt someone on the property. And the last step, step number eight, is to do a criminal background check. This is a bit controversial in the industry right now. Even us in who do this day in and day out, we, uh, find a lot of misinformation out there in how you can use the information that you uncover when you do a background criminal check. So what you want to do first, check with your state. Find out the state laws because a lot of these are changing right now. Find out what you can do with the information and you do, what you don't want to do is take that information and discriminate it in a way that your state doesn't allow. So it's tricky, but we do criminal background check we follow the guidelines that we know best, but you wanna make sure that you, you do your homework in your state and juris local jurisdiction about how you can use the information and then do your criminal background check and use it the proper way. So tenant screening has been something that our company has been very successful at. We have refined our process over the years. We have a process for getting the information, processing the information, presenting the information to the owners that we serve. And we do this the same way every time so that we don't get ourselves or our owners in trouble. So make sure that you define your way. You are in charge of how you your applicants apply. You can set the rules, but make sure you do it consistently and treat everyone fairly. So I hope this information has been helpful. In the show notes below, you'll find a link to a tenant screening checklist that we put together that will help you every time as a guideline for you so that you can make sure that you do all of the right things that we referenced today. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, like it, share it with people, and hopefully you subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified every time we put out a new video with more and more information to help you and protect you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.